All right, let's get started with lesson uh, two, gas laws. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of um, some basic principles of gases in lecture one, specifically understanding the relationship between the pressure of a gas and the force that gas exerts on a specific area, now that we can turn our attention to what are known as gas laws. Now, gas laws shows us the relationship between a pressure of the gas, the volume of the gas, temperature of the gas, and the amount of gas that we have. Now, all of these gas laws only work for an ideal gas. And remember that an ideal gas is a gas that simply has zero electrostatic attraction between the gas particles. So our first gas law we're going to look at is known as Boyle's Law. By definition, or by statement, Boyle's Law um, shows us the relationship between a volume of gas and its pressure. So the volume of a fixed quantity of gas at constant temperature is inversely proportional to the pressure. This just tells us simply that the pressure and the volume of a gas are inversely related. So if the volume goes up, then the pressure goes down. And we can look at this mathematically with an equation. So Boyle's Law just suggests that the pressure, P1, times the volume, V1, so the 1 just indicates the initial state of the pressure and the volume. So if we increase the pressure, then the volume should go down. And so because we know that, we can take the initial conditions, pressure and volume, and we can equal that to the change in pressure and the change in volume to the new conditions. So this equation shows us the original or old conditions of the gas, pressure and volume, and then the changes that occur, the new conditions. And so this is a really handy equation so that we can actually make some calculations. So if you know the initial pressure of the gas and the initial volume of the gas, and then let's say we change that volume, um, that volume in some way, say we uh, the volume uh, decreases, it gets smaller, then we can actually use this equation to find the increase in pressure, how much pressure was increased when we made this change. All right, now, not only can we calculate these values using Boyle's Law, but we can also look at a graphical representation of Boyle's Law. So, if we graph the pressure versus the volume, we will find a classic curve that indicates inverse proportional relationship as indicated by this curve here. Okay, a curve that you should be able to draw. You should be able to draw or sketch the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas. Ideal gas, that is. So, right here, our first one, this is our initial condition. So, P1 V1 conditions, right? And then we're going to change the volume. It looks like the volume is going to get smaller here. So the volume goes down, and that means the pressure goes up, which is indicated by two weights there. So um, volume goes down. Gets, if it gets smaller, the pressure then must go up. And so these are new conditions, P2, V2, which is indicated by here. Okay, So again, we can show this mathematically as well as we can show this uh, graphically with a graph. Okay, You need to know both and how to do both. Okay, So that's essentially is Boyle's Law. Again, one more time. The pressure and volume of a gas, ideal gas, are inversely proportional to each other. All right, let's go to Charles's Law now. Now, Charles's Law deals with a volume of a gas and its temperature. And the volume, according to Charles's Law, the volume of a fixed amount of gas maintained at a constant pressure is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. So Charles's Law is just stating that when the volume is changed, then the temperature is going to directly change with it. So they're directly proportional. 
So we can relate this mathematically with an equation, which is Charles's Law, which just simply shows us that the volume of the initial conditions, V1, over the temperature of the initial conditions is then equal to the volume of the change conditions, V2, over the new temperature, T2. All right? And so this mathematical relationship uh, shows us a direct relationship between um, temperature and volume. Now, for gases, and many times the temperature for gases we need to have in, use the Kelvin scale. All right? Kelvin scale is going to be very important when we're looking at gas loss. So a lot of times we're going to have to change our Celsius into Kelvin. And so remember that we have to take, to find Kelvin, we have to take 273 and add to our Celsius value to find Kelvin. We learned that earlier on in the year. Now we can also use uh, Charles' Law in, uh, graphically. We can create a graph of volume versus temperature. In this case, temperature is going to be in Celsius, and we get a straight line. Now if we extrapolate the line down to um, the x-axis, we will end up crossing the line at negative 273 degrees C. Now 273 degrees C is zero Kelvin or absolute zero. Remember absolute zero absolute zero is um, where the gas has absolutely no kinetic energy, no motion at all. Okay. So um, the line that we get here of volume versus temperature is a again a direct relation, relationship that um, pressure or sorry that volume and temperature are directly proportional to each other. All right. So let's look at uh, initial condition. Let's say that this is our initial conditions V1 and T1. And as the volume gets smaller, we get a smaller volume, V2 over T2. You'll notice that the um, temperature, so as our volume gets smaller, the temperature also gets smaller. All right? So as our volume then goes up, so does the temperature also goes up, showing us a very good direct proportional relationship. All right, so that's Charles' Law. The next one is Avogadro's Law. Now, Avogadro, remember, he's uh, the guy that uh, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is um, named after. Okay? So Avogadro was very interested in gases, and he developed a law of his own. But first of all, he had to come out with a hypothesis known as Avogadro's hypothesis, which you need to know. And it simply states this, that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of molecules. So what does this actually mean? Well, let's, let's draw a picture, okay? Draw a picture here. Uh, container here, and in this container, uh, let's say it has a volume of 22.4 liters, and the temperature is zero degrees C, and we have a constant pressure of one atmosphere, ATM, all right? And there, we're going to have another container of gas in there, and Let's try to make this a little bit more represented here, okay? And it's going to actually have the same volume, okay? So we have two containers. Both of them are going to have gases in them. They both have the same volume, all right? They are also going to have the same temperature, so 0 C and the same pressure, okay? They're different gases, all right? Both of these are going to have different gases 
in these containers. But they're the same volume, same temperature, same pressure. So according to Avogadro's hypothesis, there should then be equal amounts or equal number numbers of molecules that are in this container. So let's say we have a gas that's There's one gas, and then this gas should have exactly equal numbers of molecules in each container, according to Avogadro's law. So again, Avogadro's hypothesis states, equal volumes, which we do, 22.4 liters, of gases at the same temperature, 0 degrees C for each one, and at a same pressure pressure, which is one atmosphere of each, they're going to have equal number of molecules. All right? So make sure that you really understand that concept. It's very important to understand Avogadro's hypothesis. All right, now his law. Because of his hypothesis, we now have Avogadro's law, which states that the volume of a gas maintained at constant temperature and pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas, which just simply means this. If the volume of the gas increases, so does the quantity of moles. Or in other words, what we can say is that as long as the temperature is constant and the pressure is constant, if we increase the number of moles or the number of molecules, it should also increase the volume. So we get a relationship between volume and number of moles. And so we're going to show this mathematically. The initial num volume is directly related to the number of moles. All right. So N stands for moles. Okay. So I'm going to write that out. N is equal to the number of moles of gas. Okay. And so if we change the number of moles of gas, then we're going to change the volume. So the new volume under the change of moles equates to our um, initial conditions in this equation. So V1 divided by N1 is equal to V2 divided by N2. And this will help us to basically understand that if um, the number of moles increases, the number of moles increases, so does the volume. Moles increase, volume of the gas increase, directly proportional to each other. Okay, that's Avogadro's law. Alright, so those are the three laws that we're going to discuss in this lecture video. Now, there's some problems that you have, um, and I would like to go over the first couple of problems that are in your study guide. And then after that, I want you to be able to use these gas law equations to complete the remaining problems. All right, so let me uh, turn to a whiteboard real quick to solve these problems. Okay, let's read the first problem together, the first example problem. It says you have a one liter of gas at a fixed temperature and one atmosphere, and it's composed... Uh, Compressed, sorry, compressed to uh, 0 0.473 liters. What is the new pressure of the gas? So it looks like we have a constant temperature, but our volume and our pressure are changing. So what law uh, relates to a change in pressure and a change in volume? Well, that would be Boyle's Law. And so remember, Boyle's Law is P1. V1 equal to P2 V2. And we know that there's an inversely proportional relationship. So if our pressure um, uh, goes up, so the, the volume is going to decrease. So in this case, it appears that we start out with one liter of gas, and then we're going to decrease the volume down to 0.473 liters. So our volume is getting smaller, so our pressure should then go up. So let's see if that's the case. So if we rearrange our equation, because what we need to do is solve for the new change in pressure, P2. So we're going to take our P1, V1, divided by V2, and that's going to get us P2 
P2. So now we just plug in the measurements. The initial volume is 1 liter times the initial pressure is um, 1 atm, 1 atmosphere. And we're going to divide that by the new volume, which is going to be 0 0.473 liters. And that should give us a new pressure of 2.11 atm atmospheres. Okay? So go ahead and check the calculation, make sure that works. But notice that it follows uh, um, uh, Boyle's law quite nicely that when the our pressure or sorry, our volume went down, our pressure went up, as indicated by the 2.11 atmospheres. Okay? So that's example problem one. Let's do example problem two now. All right, so example problem two states that the pressure of helium gas in a one liter balloon is 0 0.988 atmospheres. What is the new pressure if the balloon is blown to a, become two liters? So it sounds like we got Boyle's Law again. Um, we're trying to find the, the change in pressure again. So again, just like before, we have P1, V1 over V2 equals P2. So the initial pressure was point. 988 atmospheres and the initial volume was 1 liter and then we're going to raise the volume so the volume is going to increase to 2.00 liters so since our volume is going up our pressure better go down so when we calculate this we get a new pressure of 0 0.494 atmospheres which should be smaller than our original pressure, and it is. All right. So there's um, example problem two. You know what? Let's let's do one more example. Let's go to example problem four real quick. All right. Let's kind of do that. This will be our last problem, and done with this lecture video. So all you need to do now is we'll uh, finish up the rest of the problems. All right. So in this example four. So again, we're doing example, oops, ah, you go back to our whiteboard here. Okay, so example, example four here, it says the volume of a bubble is 1.5 liters. If its temperature increases from 20 degrees C to 50 degrees C, what is its final volume? Well, it sounds like we're changing volume and temperature here. So we need to use Charles' law. So Charles' law, remember, is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. All right? And since we're trying to find the change in volume when we change the temperature, we should have an equation V1 times T2 over T1. Okay, so we just need to manipulate this equation here to find V2, okay, to find our new volume. So when we plug in the numbers, let's do that. So the initial volume is going to be 1.5, and the uh, change in temperature, the new temperature is 50, over the initial temperature which was 20. So when we calculate the new volume V2 we should see V2 is 3.75 liters. Okay. Now does that make sense that the volume actually went up with an increase in temperature? And it should because we know according to Charles law that if we increase the temperature then we also increase the volume which is indicated here. All right. So there is the three gas laws that you need to to know and understand and then some of the example calculations. Make sure that you study these notes really well, understand all of these relationships and please finish up the problems 
the example problems um, for uh, lesson two and prepare for a quiz. And that is it for now.